Hi everyone, this is Isabel, co-founder and creator of Civ, and this is the Civ Skin Microbiome Series, where we highlight the important role of the skin microbiome in healing stubborn skin conditions. Today we have on Jennifer Mills. Jen has been a practicing esthetician for 12 and a half years. She has two locations, one in New Orleans and one in Austin, Texas. And she has a special focus on acne, the microbiome, and microneedling. She is such a wealth of information. I think you guys are going to love this episode, especially if you see a lot of acne in your practice. This is definitely one to watch and re-watch. Um, and also her content on Instagram is great. It's always informative and she is just a joy. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Jen, thank you so much for being here. You are like OG, OG Sim. <laughs> oh, you were like the first one to put us on the map. Jen Mills put Sim on the map, like put that on the record for sure. So tell me, like, how did you first hear about us? Tell the people. Kieran, who's both of our friend, I was stalking his Instagram as I do. And we were like going back and forth with our DMs. Um, and he, he posted something about a spore based topical and I immediately DM him and I was like, you need to send me this right now. Did you make this? You know? And he was like, oh no, this is Isabel. She's that, she's the creator. You have to DM her, blah, blah, blah. So I think I remember I DM'd you. It was like searching your profile to see if you were like a person and <laughs> making sure you weren't some creepy company. Um, and I was like, oh my God, she's a real girl. And then I remember I DM'd you and I was like, I need like whatever, 10 bottles of this. Um, and stalked you essentially after that. Totally, no, I remember getting that DM and I like sent it in our group chat. I'm like, wait, somebody like legit wants to know about Siv. <laughs> they're like, yeah, send her product. <laughs> I'm like, Thank okay, you. perfect. And little did I know how in line this was with your entire philosophy. Like you are known in the industry as being a pioneer in this space for bringing together the gut microbiome and the skin microbiome. So. Tell me a little bit about how the skin microbiome fits into your practice. How do you think about the skin microbiome? Give me a little bit of, of info on there. Coming from the the biome fairy herself. Yes. Um, I love you. Uh, well, so it kind of started maybe seven or eight years ago. I brought on a brand called Marie Veronique, and they are a pre and probiotic based brand. And that basically put me on a new track to understanding like how the skin functions. And it's not just the stratum corneum, like what is the stratum corneum, you know, what is the actual barrier, what does it contain and kind of went on a deep dive and every medical journal I could from there. Um, and since that point, you know, there's been very, very, very few people that even have considered the microbiome, you another brand, like it's, it's just really minimal in the space. And so the spore thing really kind of took off for me at least because it made so much sense in my mind. Um, Cause you know, like I think of the skin as an, an ecosystem, you know, um, the skin microbiome has like a ton of microorganisms, a lot, most of them commensal, a lot of them symbiotic. Um, so like S epidermis, for instance, is symbiotic. And we know that when there is like a war between these species, the biome can become, um, it can drive out other species. So it becomes dysbiotic, there's barrier dysfunction. And I mean, 90% of atopic dermatitis cases present with like staph aureus, which is an opportunistic species. So that driving factor of driving out those good commensals is a huge part of my entire practice. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes sense that you're so educated on this because you have so many insane results. Like out of everybody who carries Civ, you have had some of the most amazing results with the product. So it just speaks to how in depth you understand the skin and understand the role of the microbiome and exactly how to use it i mean i still am learning so much from you on even how to use the product and how to achieve these amazing results so speaking of we have this incredible before and after that you have so kindly allowed us to share with the people so i will go ahead and pull that up because this just blows my mind how you've been able to just transform the skin like this so eight weeks and the skin is just, it's completely transformed. I mean, there's no other way to put it. So please tell us a little bit, you know, patient history, client history, you know, what is she 
you know, done up until this point? Um, how long has she been a client? You know, give us a little background there. And then how did you achieve this incredible result? Well, she was a client of mine for about a month prior to entering this case study with me. And I had put her immediately on sieve um, and an emulsifying oil cleanser. And I knew that she was the person I wanted to enter into the case study because her case is so unique. Well, I guess it's not unique anymore. 20 years ago would have been unique, but she has cystic acne. She has comodonal acne. Um, she has a lot of PIH and, you know, her history, she's, she's 29. She came to me with, you know, 30 lesions. She had, was on Accutane for six months. This all started from 20 going forward to 29. Um, she was on Spiro for three months, then it became like a regular periods and bleeding. She was on when Levy, her skin was dry and irritated and peeling off. Um, I think she did, they put her on a, you know, a tretinoin or um, an RX retinol as well. Essentially everything came back, it relapsed. Um, so when I found her, I was like, I, I know exactly what to do with you <laughs> because it's, everyone's different, but then there's so many like overlapping factors that are the same as well. Right. Yeah. And you have really developed this, this secret sauce on how to treat these really persistent um, clients who their condition just keeps coming back. It just seems like they've tried everything. They've run through the gamut and it's like, okay, now you need to go to Jen and really get everything straight. So tell me like, what was the protocol then that you put her through for this eight weeks to achieve this amazing result? Well, since I had to do it in such a short amount of time and I was a little nervous that it actually wouldn't, you know, come to fruition in that time, I honestly am kind of shocked, but, you know, microneedling over acne is something that is, you know, kind of new-ish to the game. So I've been doing it for about a year. And since we are microneedling over acne, we're doing it, you know, almost every two to three weeks um, based off of the crown study that was done, I knew I couldn't really use any retinol, any salicylic, no real actives in between those time periods because there's, you know, about seven days off. So we did Civ as one of the main serums. We did some growth factors as well from factor five, but you know, microneedling, when you think about acne, it's multifactorial, obviously we all know that, but we want to normalize those keratinocytes because of retention hyperkeratosis. We want to normalize those sebocytes because there's an overproduction of sebum or it's like a really viscous sebum. And the microneedling helps reduce those scales and sebum within the pore so that when the sebum does come out of the follicle, it's a little thinner, it's normalized, it's feeding the good commensal bacteria with all those enzymes. And we're also down-regulating like um, long-term inflammation by up-regulating short-term acute inflammation. Um, so that was what the main uh, factor with the treatment time. Um, and then on those off weeks, when we weren't microneedling, we were doing the RDS peel, which is a no downtime dermal peel, like a modified TCA. So it's sparing the epidermis, it's sparing the stratum corneum. Again, I'm trying to keep the commensal bacteria thriving um, or the diversity thriving. So spares that, goes to the dermis and does its job incredible and then tell me about her home care what did you have her on super minimal during the case study we did uh the factor five cleanser sieve their growth factor and the moisturizer and that was it okay. so i really feel like those treatments paired with the sieve was the perfect mechanism like whip it into shape in such a short amount of time yeah i totally agree now i have a theory tell me if you think this makes sense or what you think as the microbiome and microneedling expert. I have a theory that Civ helps to remodel the skin, like as in, you know, microneedling will prompt a remodeling of the skin and the skin cells and Civ kind of helps to oversee that process because mm -hmm. this is so heavily overseen by the immune system, right? And Civ is kind of, its main mechanism is to dial in the immune system, balance the immune system, because of course those microbes are controlling the skin's immune system. Yeah. So do you think there's any mechanism there in which Civ actually helps in that reformation and remodeling process? Yeah, I, well, number one, there's a huge purging process. You know, purging does happen after the microneedling overactive acne. So the Civ really helps calm that down because again, you cannot use retinol, you can't use a salicylic or a benzoyl or anything like that. And the sieve takes its place, I would imagine, by regulating those immune cells and that reaction. Or potentially, I don't know this for a fact, but potentially it's working through like paracrine signaling, you know, that cell to cell communication. We already know that's happening with growth factors. We know that that's happening with microneedling. 
who is to say that it's not happening with Civ? I would love to like see some kind of like literature with that because there has to be. If if they're communicating with like they're sending microbial signatures already, why wouldn't they be doing like some kind of like paracrine signaling? You know? Absolutely, I think that's exactly right. So, wow, that is amazing. (laughs) Love it, love it, cool. And then so as we kind of wrap up here, I always like to ask, give me an industry hot take. Give me something spicy. You're spicy. (laughs) (laughs) You always have something spicy to say. (laughs) Well, you know, I don't love clickbait, but for the sake of this, I will. Um, I just really like to limit that like indiscriminatory, like killing off of bacteria. So that could mean blue light therapy. It could mean benzoyl peroxide. It could mean um, hypochlorous acid. There's no, it's, debatable right now in the dermatology world there's no like clinical information that says 100 percent yes these three things are safely targeting only pathogenic bacteria or opportunistic bacteria there's nothing that says your commensals are safe so if we're constantly nuking the skin um i just don't think that it's a like a viable long-term way of making sure that the skin can function properly which is why i've mostly always avoided it Hypochlorous, I can, I'll use maybe post gym or pre gym or post hiking, maybe on like a spider bite or, you know, something that would warrant needing like a real antimicrobial. But for an everyday mist, seems like um, a moot point, like you're kind of defeating the purpose of keeping the skin healthy, you know? I totally agree. Yes, I, I have my own thoughts on hypochlorous, which I won't get into here, but absolutely agree there's there's nothing saying that certain antimicrobial agents can only target certain bacteria and it's not to say that like i don't have products in office that do you know i have skin better I'm, they use phenoxyethanol every you need stabilizers and products right it's not mm-hmm. about like demonizing a, a a chemical but it's more about being more nuanced and having more discernment with it so that you're not just like doing what everyone else is doing, jumping on a bandwagon and using hypochlorous acid to like bathe in all day long. I mean, why don't you just bathe in bleach then? You know, <laughs> don't know. or like antibacterial soap your entire body every five minutes. Um, seems a little aggressive. <laughs> totally. No, that's, that's a great take. And um, I love it. So thank you, Jen, so much for being here, for making an appearance on the show. I think people are going to love it, especially people who see acne all the time, which who doesn't? Um, there's so many great informational bits in here that you've shared with us. So thank you so much. Um, give the people where they can find you, um, shout out, you know, anything that you want to promote or talk about, I'm sure that they would love to hear. Um, so Instagram and website cult skin by Jen, uh, you can book through the website as well. You can also book through the office number and my Instagram profile if you're in town or if you're coming in town. Um, we also have Biome Cult coming out. It is my really diverse prebiotic uh, fiber blend that works specifically with the gut microbiome to help kind of push out excess astrobilome, um, feed good commensal gut bacteria, help with mucosal lining, which is part again of that gut skin axis. And estheticians can go to the link in my bio. They can click a form to get more information about being a wholesaler for that. Um, as well as our new micro noodling over acne webinar. We're doing a second one because the first one sold out. So we're going to be doing that um, in April sometime. Amazing. Love that. All of those links will be in the description. So you guys should definitely check them out. Please give her a follow. She's always posting super educational, informed content um, on her Instagram. So there's a lot to learn from Jen, you guys. She is so knowledgeable, so smart. Like I talk to estheticians every day, all day, and she is seriously one of the most educated estheticians I have ever met. And I have probably talked to thousands at this point. So (laughs) kudos to you, Jen, honestly, like your ability to maintain and retain and then recite information is, is fantastic. And you're just, you're so knowledgeable and, you know, thank you for everything that you're doing for Civ and the support that you've given us. And yeah, thank you. (laughs) Thank you guys so much for listening. All of the relevant links and details will be in the show notes below. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel, share these videos. It really does help us so much. And as always, tiny bacteria, big deal.